Exercising and eating well are some simple ways to stay healthy, but good hygiene is also a big factor, especially when it comes to your teeth. And here to talk more about how your oral health can influence your body is Dr. Brian Curtis with OSF Healthcare. Good morning, doctor. Thanks for being with us. Oh, thank you. Good morning. Absolutely. Good morning. And to start, what kind of problems could affect your body if you have bad oral hygiene? Yeah, so we, we've talked in the past in regards to your oral hygiene and how it can impact uh, increased risk of heart disease, pancreatic cancer, rheumatoid arthritis, worsening diabetes. And uh, a recent study came out of uh, New York University talking about actually uh, oral health and cognitive decline and Alzheimer's disease. Uh, demonstrating that uh, tooth loss is actually, there was a correlation between the two. And so increasing tooth loss led up to about one and a half times more risk of cognitive decline and about 1.3 times more risk of Alzheimer's disease. Wow, yeah, a lot of studies going into that. Uh, let's talk about mouthwash. Can that be a good additional thing to put in your oral hygiene routine? Yeah, I, I think you could intermittent throughout the day. I don't think you need to do it after you uh, uh, brush your teeth. Uh, and the other big one always is flossing, which I think a lot of people don't do. And so you should at least floss at least once a day uh, to really help uh, your teeth and particularly your gums. And with flossing, obviously it's very important, but how can it help with your cognitive ability? Yeah, so a lot of the thought behind, uh, there's two thoughts behind the tooth loss and uh, directly related to flossing and oral care, which is actually gingival inflammation or gingivitis, because there's actually a bacteria that has been linked to Alzheimer's and the cognitive decline. And so with inflammation to your gums allows kind of leakage or seepage of that bacteria into your bloodstream is probably the thought behind it creating this con chronic inflammation. Uh, and so by flossing and brushing, you actually decrease the amount of gingival inflammation and gingivitis that you have uh, because it keeps the bacteria out of the gum line uh, and it, it just keeps your gums healthy and your teeth healthy. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about the connection with diet and uh, dental health hygiene. You know, what are some things that maybe uh, food and, dr and uh, drink and stuff that we should stay away from to kind of keep our teeth healthy? Yeah, a lot of stuff in moderation is always good. Uh, and so uh, sugary drinks, sodas, uh, even diet sodas uh, are very bad for your teeth. Um, uh, teas and coffees can stain them, but they're not necessarily bad for your teeth. Uh, and then uh, fruit juices, and then particularly in children, uh, watching fruit juices in bottles and sippy cups where they tend to hold it in their mouth for a long period of time. And so really try to switch more to a water base within that. In regards to food, plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables. And a lot of the thought also within that is the increasing tooth loss directly relates to changes in your diet. And so your ability to consume fresh fruits and vegetables actually decreases when you don't have the teeth actually to kind of chew on that. And it leads to just a decrease and so you start eating more unhealthy during that time. Yeah, absolutely. Some great tips there. Um, and let's kind of talk about, you mentioned the cognitive decline. Any other sort of uh, symptoms or side effects you can get right. from not really paying attention to your teeth? I mean, and is there kind of any recommendations that you have for people to go to the dentist? Yeah, so really uh, annual checkups at least twice a year to see your dentist. Uh, the big piece within it is uh, keeping uh, your teeth healthy, your gums healthy. Uh, but, you know, really oral cancers are a big deal. And, and so your dentist will actually catch those. And I've seen a couple cases recently where a good dentist actually caught an oral cancer very early. And then so the earlier you catch them, the better off you will be. And so brushing at least twice a day, flossing every tooth you want to keep, uh, and then uh, f uh, really a good healthy diet. Yeah, that's some great tips. Any like symptoms? We always talk about symptoms, you know, for stuff. Any symptoms in your mouth that if you might see, say, oh, that kind of gives me cause for concern. I need to go to the dentist. Sure. Uh, any uh, bleeding from your gums would be a reason to see the dentist. A uh, so, uh, tooth that uh, has a heat or a cold sensitivity, uh, it could just be a normal change, but it also could be an indication of a, a root disease or a cavity. Uh, and so any loose tooth that you notice in your mouth, uh, and then really if you see your gums actually receding down so you can actually start seeing more and more spaces between your teeth, that's a really clear sign in gingival disease and you really need to get in to see your dentist. A lot right. of good information this morning. Yes. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Curtis, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. And of course, we will have this interview on our website, ciproud.com.